Okay, so how did I make this fire? Well, you can uh, pretty much tell, you can pretty much guess, by the fact that I have this textured environment panel open here. So, uh, yeah, this is an entirely procedural uh, method for making this kind of uh, boiling, rolling kind of fire thing. So let's take a look and see what I did. So first of all, I added a backdrop. I went to the, uh, to the backdrop options and added a textured environment. Add textured environment. Let's see if I can recreate it really quickly. Is that the one? Nope. There, there's the new one. Okay, click on texture. And uh, I started this, uh, this is kind of an offshoot of something I was working on. I wanted to make an electricity image. So I went to procedural, and I set the procedural type to um, ridged multifractal, because that can do some pretty cool electrical looking effects. Let's change my noise type to value, or uh, there are a couple in here that work better than others. Uh, the scale, see, I'll scale, I'll change the scale, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That gives us a kind of a cool little electrical thing. Uh, I did animate this so that, you know, it's kind of moving through the texture. So let's change that to 0 0.05, 0 0.05. That's how the deep, the depth of it. I like in that, the way that looks. So 0.1, I'll do 100 millimeters. And if I click on that E that was off the screen here, the E button there, that brings up my graph editor, and I can add a node, or add a node, add a key, and I'll change my post behavior to linear, and the pre behavior to linear. And yes, I'm going pretty quickly through this. Basically, this just moves the texture through the, uh, the invisible plane that makes up the uh, textured environment. Let's make that negative instead of positive. Whoa! That did not do what I wanted it to do. That looks kind of cool too. You can get some pretty uh, fun stuff with this. So, anywho... Oh, I'm changing the scale. No wonder. Duh! I don't want to animate the scale. I want to animate the position. You probably saw that. Anyway, animate the position. Let's do a negative value this time. Linear, linear, and there we go. Now we're slide. Now we're actually sliding the texture through the invisible plane that makes up the textured environment. There we go. So that's all cool, but you know, it it does give us a pretty regular looking pattern. You know, we 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 could adjust these things, but you know, we're still just getting a regular repeating pattern, especially if I... So... Let me see. And a lot of times I just kind of will drag these things out. Oh, I have VPR on, by the way, which is why you can see the background in real time. Otherwise, you would just see that, because there's nothing else in the scene. We're only editing the textured environment. So... Yep, yep, yep. So we get to this point, and we see that looks pretty cool. If this is point one all the way around, well, there we here's where we really start to see this repeating pattern. Yeah, it's just a bunch of overlapping loops, kind of a thing, and that doesn't look very realistic. So I was trying to roughen that up a bit to. Uh, give my electricity look a little more variation because I wanted it to be a smaller pattern so I could you know map it on a larger object and blah 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 so I just wanted small electrical things and I was getting these large loops that don't really uh, work very well for me so uh, what I tried doing is I tried adding another procedural layer add layer procedural and uh, using it as a displacement, a texture displacement. But then I get this horribleness where it's, you know, it, it just does not work. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting pieces, entire chunks getting cut out and stuff. And that, yeah, that's not working for me. Uh, I could turn the texture down and I'm still getting that, the texture layer. So how do I 
increase the amount of distortion or displacement without getting these extra little ridges in there. Um, well, one way I found is if I add another layer to it, I'll just add a gradient layer. I'll drop the gradient layer in and uh, do white to black. We'll try that to start and change the blending mode of this to texture displacement and the t this other one here to normal. And now we're getting more of the kind of texture displacement I wanted. And that looks pretty cool like that. But I don't really want to see the turbulence pattern there. And if I make this turbulence pattern smaller, that's way too small. Point 0.1. Yeah. And you see, we, we can see the turbulence pattern. I don't want to do that. So um, I'll just take this texture color here on the turbulence, the layer that I'm using to distort the other. And I'm going to turn it all the way down to black, so it's the same color as the backdrop. And there's our pattern, and I can adjust the amount of texture displacement with with this. So that gives us some cool variations on our, our wavy lines. But then I was thinking, well, what other patterns do I have? What other uh, types of... Um, oh, what am I thinking of? What other procedural textures might be cool in here? So then I tried, hmm... I decided to try the, uh, what was it, crumple? Yeah, crumple. That looks pretty swift right there, just as a cool little texture thing. Let's take a look at crumple on its own, on its, by itself. And let's raise this up. So here's what crumple looks like at full size. Let's adjust these around. So there we, I moved the crumple up to a larger scale. And let's see what happens when I displace the texture there. Yeah, that, that's kind of working. It's not quite what I want. So I'm probably not going to get to the, the fire look it, itself with this exactly because my settings are completely different from the original. But this was the basic workflow of getting to that. Wait, does it help to have that on? It might help to have that on. There we go. Now I'm finally getting to see something. And I animated uh, both of these textures, the crumple and the ridged multifractal. So uh, let's see, the image. I also, uh, you saw me animate the Z position. I also animated the Y position. And let's see what that looks like. So it's moving up. Let's turn off this stuff here. See, it's moving up. And because I decided to not do fire on this one, or not do electricity on this one, I can lower the amount that it moves through the texture. So let's try two, negative 200 millimeters instead of negative 800 millimeters. So now it's moving up. It's probably moving up too quickly. So let's adjust to that. 300 millimeters. And normally just play it. I don't know how the screen capture software will take that, but there we go. That's just our ridged multifractal. If I turn on my crumple layer that and the, dis the gradient that you actually causes the displacement, we get this. I want to animate the crumple layer now, so let's uh, just throw something in here. I want to again animate it on the Z so I get that boiling effect as it goes through the texture. Negative 200 millimeters, not 200 meters. Set the behavior pre and post behavior to linear. And I will also move this up a little bit. Now these numbers are going to be different for you if you are putting this on an actual object. If you're using this as a surface uh, texture, you'll have to come up with your own numbers because these will be different. What if I make this point oh five? Oops.
You know, I, I think I need these to be smaller. Not that small. That's probably closer to it. I don't think my numbers are matching the last time I did it. So, well, maybe one was good, but now I'm really seeing that uh, those little rounded areas that I wanted to see. So now we're actually starting to see what might pass as a fire effect. So uh, the problem is we're not getting the color, and I could, of course, change the color of the of this here, but that's really a kind of a one-dimensional color change. It's not really doing much for me. So let's uh, pump that up, and of course you can see by just playing with these things you can get some interesting looks and might inspire you to try out some other procedural textures. But uh, let's add one more layer, gradient, and let's start this off as a dark red. And this is, I'm just going to leave it set to previous layer. So I want this set to be a kind of a dark red, maybe dark red orange. And at the bottom, well, around here, I want to set it to be a, like a yellowish orange. Maybe somewhere up in here. And this is the Jovian color picker, the free version. And down here at the bottom, which already has a key for some reason, I want that to be white. So, no, not gray, white. And I'll need to adjust these colors because they look pretty horrid. But that's the basic technique of uh, this procedural fire that I kind of came into accidentally. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you subscribe to this channel and watch other videos. I'm sorry this one's been a little short and maybe a bit scattered. And also, check out the videos at uh, liberty3d.com. I have some for sale there, and there are some other videos for sale by some other great artists, and we also have some plugins for Lightwave. So uh, thanks for watching, and have a great week.